So we'd like to tell you a little bit about a program that we have in History of Science, which through outside funding has enabled us to do a kind of exploration of new forms of graduate education beyond the classroom. We've organized a series of trips and seminars uh, really extensively using the outside world as a way of deepening our research through texts and archives and other means. The first of those trips was called Technical Lands, and we used it as a chance to bring a group of graduate students to explore areas where nu nuclear weapons, missiles, um, land art, uh, a whole range of transformations of the land have made possible a new way of looking at the history and use of lands that are involved in these technical projects. So I uh, had the great good fortune of serving as the trip coordinator. Uh, so uh, in my role, it was really a fantastic experience for me to get to work closely with you and think about which sites to visit and why, and really think pedagogically about how to pair different places, perhaps pairing land art with mm -hmm. um, a history of science site the next day, for example. It was a, it was very striking to be in the presence of missiles and mm. and groundwater and the site of a nuclear disaster or to be at a place where the first nuclear bomb had had been detonated or to look at the these artworks carved out of the mm. cliffs so i i think there was something just very strong about seeing all of this together and it was different than reading about it i, I Absolutely. Uh, I can talk about one site in particular we went to, which was uh, White Sands, New Mexico, where we uh, drove for several hours and it was really just a vista of monotony punctuated every once in a while by very special objects uh, for us as historians of science, whether it's uh, you know a missile careening overhead or a rare breed of antelope along the side of the road or the detritus of other missile tests in, from the past. So that really drove home to me this idea that these places uh, are so dense with meaning and really are truly layered in a very material, specific way with these histories that we think so, uh, so much about. I was impressed on the trip, too, by just having the group of people that we had there uh, the group of graduate students from Harvard and a group of faculty and graduate mm -hmm. students from, from MIT who were with us, thinking about what this meant to different people. We, mm -hmm. we, t we took the possibility of actually giving mini lectures to each other, mm -hmm. and uh, I found that very striking, too, to be able to see things and learn about them at the same time. And perhaps the best part about it is the conversation didn't end with the trip. We got to uh, lead a seminar this past fall also on the theme of technical lands. So we had this trip and it changed and it as we began to sort of push on the boundaries of it, discovering new things about that materiality, then the seminar came out of mm. the trip and became a, a way of further exploring it. Uh, I think that, you know, in a way this gets at the broader trend in the Department of History of Science. We're really after this notion of learning that is very strongly rooted in archival studies, but also to move out. And our, st our students, many of them, are involved with the exhibits that we do in the collection of historical scientific instruments. And then other students are more and more engaged in the critical media practice program and making films and uh, still photography and sound works. Uh, uh, and then there are these trips, so getting a kind of experiential engagement with sites where science and technology are being developed. So I, I think the, the, the broader impact of this is really that we're using this opportunity. We're trying to take this chance of, ta of, of making graduate education something that is got one foot squarely in the uh, traditional modes of historical writing and its sources, the critical analysis of texts and archives, but the other foot also leaning towards these novel forms, both of gaining knowledge and expressing it. So uh, that's really my hope for this program of graduate education beyond the classroom. Good. Thank you, Leah. Okay, thank you. <laughs>